What is up my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to Strap Mechanic. Once again we are in our survival world today and we will continue modifying our old Lear Shadow of ours to work properly in the survival environment. Now there's not too much missing in this plane. Uh, we did a lot of stuff across the last episodes. Um, but one very important system that is still missing is the yaw system. Um, last episodes I called it the rudder system which is technically incorrect because this plane does not have a rudder. The rudder is uh, on the vertical stabilizer in the back a little control surface, uh, a little control surface. We don't have that here, it's all fixed. And that's why we are we're achieving the same effects by just uh, giving the engines different power levels, basically if needed. So when we're flying straight, of course these two engines will produce the same power, but if we want to enter a turn or if we want to turn on the ground, uh, we will give one of these engines a greater power than the other one and this will in turn, of course, force the nose of the plane into a certain direction. So now today we're gonna try something new actually, because I, I built some rudder systems before into a few planes. So uh, these all worked, but they were quite complicated systems, to be honest, um, out of the math blocks, where we, where we basically we took uh, the velocity, the sideways velocity of the plane, and is this now velocity? Yes, I think so. Uh, take the sideways velocity of the plane, and then feed it through a whole lot of checks and counters and stuff, and that will actuate the rudder. Uh, but there's a simpler way if you know how to use it. And that is, we can use the PID function in the math block. And that's what we're going to try today. So let's start. I already set up, uh, of course, the speed, the velocity sensor. Sorry. Um, if you're working with this, with this gauge here from the, from the mod pack, it has a speed function and a velocity function. And the difference between these two is, in case you don't know, the speed is the speed uh, of the creation regardless of direction. So you can place this anywhere facing any direction and it will just give you the, the speed the creation is traveling. Um, contrary to that, the velocity sensor um, of course mes measures a velocity and the velocity is a vector uh, with a certain length of course so a certain speed but also a certain direction so direction is important here and it's measured uh, can I say this through the through the gauge so we are measuring in the direction in into which we are looking right now so we're measuring downwards downwards velocity and also of course I'm on the lift so yeah, we can, we can see that. So this is very subtle, but it's showing something, right? If we are, if we are putting the velocity sensor here, so it, it would be measuring our sideways velocity like this one does. Uh, this shows nothing because we're not moving into this direction. If we are going to the speed function, of course, this is once again measuring something. And it's also always measuring positive values, of course. Speed down, speed up, doesn't matter. Okay, that's why we need the velocity here, because we only want to have the, the speed, the velocity in this direction. So we want it to be zero when we are, when we are flying true, straight and level. Good, so this is the first, the first value we're gonna use in the system. And then we can already take the, uh, the math block out and set it to the PID function. Right. So um, now I'm I'm no expert with this with this PID function. I, I know the, what the PID system does very roughly, um, and how to set it up. I know how to set it up, but not how to, you know, to tune it so it works well. So this might be a failed experiment. We we might do it at the, 
the old way, the classical way. But uh, let's try it because if it works, it's a, a much, a much simpler, much better system. Also, I think a system that reacts fast because, of course, if you're measuring and calculating and stuff, every single block adds a tick. So, if you're calculating half a second, and then bringing the output, of course, the system is not very fast to react to to the input that might come. Right, so the first thing the PID block needs is two inputs. So that is, of course, the velocity we set up. And this value needs to be compared to another value, a target value. And this target value will be stored in this memory panel. And it's going to be zero, because we want, uh, we want the lateral speed to be zero at all times. So let's hook this up. This I have painted white. We'll put the, the comparing value up, and this is going to be black. And then I'm going to set this up here already, but not use it for now. Uh, we need three other values P, I, and D value. Okay, we can already. We can already color those um, accordingly. So it's this row here. You see, it, the P looks yellow, lol. Uh, but uh, it's orange. So it's orange, red, and, and purple. So it's, it's, it's these colors here in this direction. So we got the orange, we got the red, and we got the purple value. Same here for these counters. The counters are what we are using now for the testing because we can easily change the value. In the end, once we know these values, I will hook up these memory panels because they're static values. They don't need to change, so we don't need counters. Uh, just short explanation. Again, as I said before, I, I do not like to have counters where I need static values. And the reason is that counters have to count. Like, this is our thrust system, okay? This is a counter, of course. We go from 0 to 99. 0 to 100. And that's fine. It's not a static value. It changes. And it can also be reset without breaking anything. Now, here, here we got the static values. We got the value 0 and the value... Uh, actually, I, I, I changed it to 97. Um, just because when we go up to 100, the system overshoots and we go, go to 102. And this is not displayable on our our number display back here. So we got two single digit number displays, so this will indicate the tens and the and the ones, like from zero zero to ninety-nine. Right. So I, I changed this value to ninety-seven. This system will overshoot by two ticks, but it will now range from zero to ninety-nine. Good. But I do not want this value to change. And if we have a counter here, and I'm, I'm working here, and I'm clicking E on it, the value is gone. And for this, of course, I know the value now. Maybe I got another system where I don't remember my static value anymore because I built it some days ago. I never had to change it. And then I have to find out what the value is again and store it again and then mess it up again once I click E on it. So. Uh, at least for me, it's always good practice. Static values uh, using memory panels, and we, we're going we're going that, that one step further to just we have to program them. Okay, we cannot uh, set up the value like with the counters. We have to store it in here. That's one one button and one click more. So, yeah. But still, in the end, the result is uh, we have a much safer system and also if we are looking from the outside with the connect tool we can see what what systems are doing basically so i know there are two static values here that get somehow calculated and and feed into a counter so this could be the, <coughs> the thrust system right so you know what's going on inside the system just by the colors of the blocks and that's not the case if you if you're using counters for everything. Good. 
So that's what we need. We got everything we need basically for the PID block. We got the, the measured, it's connected. Yes, we got the measured value. We got the static value. And we got these three values. So that's where it, where it gets complicated, a bit complicated, or at least complicated for me. PID stands for proportional integral, 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 and derivative. And now I'm on, yeah, I'm not on thin ice, but I'm on, on, on slippery ground, so to say. So I'm not really sure that what I'm telling you now is correct. But here's how I understand it. The proportional value tells you how um, the proportion between the in and the output should be. Like, we're measuring a speed here. Let's say we are measuring, we are, we are flying in this direction, so we're slipping a bit, and we are measuring a lateral speed <coughs> of 10 blocks per second. To get this plane straight, we need to change the power of these engines. So at, we're going to start, okay, we need more power here and less power here, but how much? And that is what I think, um, where the proportional value comes in. We're measuring 10, but we want to add 50. Let's say 50. So, P should be 5. Right? That's, a, that's how I understand the value anyway. So, we're just gonna have to try it. Right, this connects here, here, and here. And we are going one, two, three, four, five. Good. The integral or the derivative value, I'm not sure what does this. Uh, what does what? Let's leave this at zero and this at one. I think the integral value does um, does the following. It it checks, of course, um, the target and the measured value. And now there's a ten block difference. Let's stick with our example. Now. There's a ten block difference. This we know, but uh, the integral or the derivative, I I don't know. Uh, it not only checks the position relative to the target value, so where are we and where do we need to go, but where are we going right now? So do we have a value of 10 that is increasing, so going away from the target value, or do we have a value of 10 that is decreasing? Because, of course, if we have uh, a value that's not the target value, we need to do something, but if we have 10 here and 0 here, but we are going nine, eight, seven, we're already going the right way. There ne doesn't need to be as much of a change in the power in the engines here as if we are going 11, 12, 13, 14, we're increasing the distance to the zero value here. So there, there needs to, more needs to happen if that's the case. So that's what, what one of those uh, values checks. And uh, yeah, I think that was the integral value and the derivative uh, I read something that was something like uh, the the error, the the build, the system has an error, an error value, and a build of error. You know what? I'm not going to get into this today. Yeah, either it works or it doesn't. And uh, maybe maybe one of you guys has the talent for this stuff and uh, knows exactly what's happening here and can tell me how to probably tune this. Cool. So. Uh, I got five here, I had one here, and let's go one, one, because reasons, and this output of the PID block should go into this and into this gate, which is the addition gate that just adds our, our power input that we selected for both engines, and PID value. So let's take it in the air and see what happens.
That is really not looking bad. Let me actually... Uh, You know what? We're gonna land, and we're gonna hook up another number display to the uh, to the velocity sensor because I want to know how how good, how precisely it it can hold it can hold the zero value. What's around? That's nice. Let's hook it up. Alrighty, so this little display on the right engine should now show our lateral speed. So let's go. Okay, so we definitely do have a, a lateral speed. It's also quite high for my taste. So what happened? Let's try to fix uh, fixed PID values. Well, first let's see if we do not have the PID system, what's the values then? So we're gonna this go connect this. Turn around before <laughs> before a red guy comes. Can we clear that? I hope so. Alright. So that's I need I need tens. I need tens and ones, not not ones and decimal numbers. Let's change that. Okay, that doesn't seem to do all too much. So what I think happened is this value is too small. Um it does something to the engines, but the effect is way too small to be noticed, so that's why we have, basically we do have the same lateral speed, um, if the PID is active or not. So, let's go with 20. 20, we get, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 20, 5, 1. That's <laughs> as good as any other number. Um, that's just random. Right, but let's try that out with the new numbers. Oh man. Oh man, okay. Let's land. If you think about it, it's all very, very obvious what happened. But if you don't, you're going to fly test and, and wonder why you don't have any effects with your systems.
I have fed this value, this PID value, into both engines. So everything that's get, that gets added and subtracted gets added and subtracted on both sides. But we need uh, one positive and one negative addition to one side to, to even have asymmetrical thrust. So this doesn't change the symmetry of the thrust at all. Yes, 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 that's what happens. Let's, let's try it this way. We disconnect this engine. This shouldn't really matter because the, uh, the PID, I think, it, it searches for the correct value by itself. So shouldn't matter, but we take this PID value, make it negative, and put this into the engines. Right. And now, let me guess, the value we have set is way too big. Spiraling out of control in three, two, one, go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the value is too high. You see, it's... Ah, that's looking better. That's looking better. All right, let's go. Let's land. Let us land. Why am I always going to land to land if I got a seaplane? Doesn't matter. This is 20. We are going to go back to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 5, 2, 1. Let's test that out. I mean, we're getting some lateral speed, but I guess that's fine with me. It doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to work. And I think we can leave it like this. If we're already in the air, let's once again go for a little test flight. Yes, that's very good. I feel very much in control right now. Very good. So, let's clean up the airplane. Good, so this should now work the same. Right, we don't need this anymore. Anything else we forgot? I don't think so. Alrighty then, to finish up the yaw system we needed to do two more things and that is uh, steering on the ground and steering in the water. Now on the ground, it's, that's an easy fix. You see, um, 
all we need to do basically is uh, add a certain value on this engine and subtract a certain value on this engine when we're on the ground and pressing uh, A or D. Uh, that's, only, that's only going to activate when we're on the ground. So, of course, we're just building a ground sensor in there. That's three blocks should be fine. It needs to also detect the ground when we are when the nose is up, so the ground is about here, but that should be fine. So when this sensor activates, we want this system to work. And what it's going to do is the following. We will need a multiplier block. This block is going to multiply the sensor value, either on or off, one or zero, with uh, right with the AD converter value, that's ranging from minus one to one. Multiply this with a static value. It's going in there. program this up right now. Let's say the maximum value of thrust for these engines is 400, I think. So what happens if we add and, add and subtract 100? How about that? Let's see what happens there. This goes there. This is hooked up here. Wonderful. This goes there. This goes there. This is going to be 100. Are we hooked up? We are. Okay. 100. Save that. And let's see if it's already working or if we need to change the direction. Of course, it is working, but if we do not hook it up, Wait a second, we also need, of course, the negative value of this. Let's place this here. This goes here, this goes there. Let's see if it's the right direction. It is. Okay, but that seems a little slow. Okay, so let's go. 200. That's still quite slow. 300. Yes, that's, that's not looking too bad. Nice, that's working nicely. We can even go, let's go 400. Let's test that out. That's even better. Okay, we're gonna stick with 400 now. And uh, now let's make this plane steerable in the water. Because, of course, now we cannot detect the ground anymore. So we need another little system that tells the boat to steer in the water when it's in the water or when we want it and that's what we're going to do now we will need a switch um, yeah the, the easiest thing I, I can think of right now is we're just gonna have a switch that enables this plane to turn into into a boat mode basically and when that happens uh, Yes, we'll, we'll have steering in the water. So first things first. We can also hook this up to this. Let's see. 
Oops. Ah, okay. Of course, we need to hook up the switch, which is the switch eight now. Okay, is this touching? I'm not sure. Um, what is supposed to do is when we're in the water driving as a boat uh, we do not want this airplane to lift out of the water uh, so this should push it down a little hopefully preventing it from uh, from going up into the air first Oh, I think it can go up to 45. That's fine. Please, 45. 45. Good. So, and now when this is active, we also, basically we want, we want the same system as this one. Multiplier. Like this, also by this, and by this. So now sure, sure, we have to hook it up. Why do I always forget this? And why do I always forget that we need one positive and one negative value? Doesn't matter. This is negative now. Negative. Of course, it's the wrong direction. and this but in the water it seems we do not have that much of uh, of resistance that level of resistance we have on the land when the tires are touching the ground so we don't need 400 as it as it seems so we disconnect this let's get a counter counter this goes here this goes here this goes here here we're gonna have two hundred. One, two, save. I'm not exactly sure why the airplane is hanging lower in the water on the left side now. Not exactly sure. Yeah, but that's working very nicely as a board. Look at that. Are we able to... And it seems that we are unable to take off. Which is good. And then we disengage the board mode. Okay, did I not have... Something is... Something's fishy here. Something's really fishy here. Okay, so we're off to find a random misconnection again.
Na, come on, let's go. Found the arrow. Um, the the sensor, the velocity sensor was was set to altitude. Of course, that that can't be good. So if we manage to get into the water, please, please. That's why. Okay, okay, I uh, know. What is this now? Velocity, right? Speed, velocity. So, where did we mess up now? Oh man, this is turning, <laughs> turning out to be complicated now. Okay, but now it's working. Seems to have problems on the ground. Which should be an easy fix, we just hook it up to the ground sensor. Or to the negative value of the ground sensor. So this system is only active when we're in the air. And we shouldn't have a problem. Good. Let's delete this. Then let's get... Put this here. A multiply block. Right. So this is the PID value. Let's multiply it by... This is going to be a NOR gate. The NOR gate will have an input from the from the ground sensor and this is off now because we're on the ground sure if this is on this gets multiplied this value goes here this does not go here I have a negative value here go here and go here so that should be fine now we shouldn't have this problem on the ground and let's also couple this to not to not uh, in boat mode so not gate again this up here this up here and this up here so let's see Go into boat mode. Okay, beautiful. Let's get out of boat mode. It needs, it needs a tiny bit more power, I think. It gets barely out of the water. Uh, this has become worse. I, I'm pretty sure it's because because of all the stuff we built in. It's, it's gotten a little heavier, so it has more problems, of course, to come out of the water. Good. That's fine. That's no problem. It gets a little bit more power. This lag, though. Slack makes me think that we're going to get kicked out once more. But let's hope not.
apart from that Apart from that, look at that. It's a good flyer. It's a good boat. Is it also a good car? This would need a, a wheel brake then, if we use it as a car. That's nice, look at that. I'll cruise around here. And when we're done, just send it. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so now let's find a nice spot to land. Let's go on this little lake here. Cool, so that was some progress today. <laughs> some hard grinding too, some problems, but overall this plane is turning out very nicely. I'm not really sure what's missing anymore to be honest. It's flying good. I think I think next time we just we could just close this plane up, give it a new paint job, and then we can go on our adventures. Awesome. Okay, guys, thank you very much for sticking around to the end of the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, comment on this video, on my Steam profile, check out my workshop, there are also more nice planes. And I'll see you next week when we finish up this plane and have our grand finale for this little series. See you then. Bye-bye.